and welcome back. In this video we're going to continue our exploration of the R programming language. In particular our examples will be primarily focusing on bivariate data analysis. Today we're going to talk about how to construct confidence bands and prediction bands given some level of alpha and also how to construct an ANOVA table um, just from the basic uh, structures associated with the R programming language. So the first thing that I want to do, since we're going to be working with bivariate data sets, is to create just a sample that we're going to be working with. So I'm going to call the first um, control variable set SX1. And let's assume this is normally distributed. Let's assume we have uh, 50 data points with a mean of 14 and a standard deviation of 10. The next thing I want to do is to create the error term associated to the linear regression model. Let's assume again that this is going to be normally distributed as it typically is. Let's assume that again we have 50 data points. These two should match in terms of their sample size. And if you don't already know, the expected value of the error term per linear model should be equal to zero. I want to assume that its standard deviation is 1.2. Ideally, that standard deviation should be equal to the standard deviation of your response variable. Um, so let's just hope that it is. Now I'm going to construct my artificial response terms. I'm going to call this SY. And let's assume that beta 1 is equal to 0 0.15 and then times our control variable and plus the vertical intercept beta 0. Let's assume that's 5.1 plus our error term and that's going to give us our linear model. All right. So now I want to do, now what I want to do is construct a function that displays the CI and PI bands for the model. All right. So the first thing I want to do is, of course, go up to here and create a new R script. And this function is going to be called CIPI. And this is, of course, going to be a function that's going to take in a control variable vector, a response vector, ideally of the same exact size, and a user-defined value of alpha. So that is our function. Let us just save it just to make sure. So I'm going to call it CIPI.R. And of course, again, once you save it, it should appear down here in your files window. So this is just going to display a scatter plot with the CI and PI bands of the data set. So what are all the things that I need to have in order to construct those CI and PIs? So n is going to be equal to the length of either um, x1 or y, it doesn't really matter. So let's just assume that it's equal to x1 because they should be the same exact length. Um, we need the uh, mean of x, the mean of y, and we also need the standard deviation of x. Let's do sx equals sd of x1. And then sy is going to be equal to the standard deviation of uh, y. Uh, then let's calculate the correlation coefficient between these two vectors. So that's going to be cor of x1 and y. And those are our basic uh, univariate and bivariate metrics. Let's also calculate the error sum of squares, so SSE. So that's going to be equal to SY, the quantity squared, times the sample size minus 1, times 1 minus the coefficient of determination. And what else do we need? We also need the mean square error. So that's going to be equal to at least its estimate. Uh, the error sum of squares divided by N minus 2. And let's also calculate our parameters for our associated sample linear regression line. So beta 1 hat, that's going to be equal to R times SY divided by SX. And then we have beta 0 hat, this is going to be equal to Y bar minus R slope beta 1 hat times X bar. So those are all of our important uh, univariate and bivariate metrics for simple linear regression. Now, of course, we would want to define our alpha to be equal to something, but keep in mind, we are taking our alpha value as an input from the user. So this should be given, so this is given by our user. So we cannot define it or we should not define it in our function because that, that should be free up to the user. So given that level of alpha, we should be able to calculate a t-critical value, assuming that everything is normally distributed. So that's going to be equal to qt, uh, and then alpha over 2, in the upper tail, with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So lower tail equals false. That's our t-critical value. 
And let's also define what we define as our inputs for our confidence and prediction bands. Now, typically this should range across the entire domain, maybe a little bit more than our actual domain of our uh, control variables. So let's define our lower bound. I'm gonna call it lower B to be equal to the minimum of our control variable minus, let's do two, and then our upper bound for our confidence and prediction bands. So let's do the maximum of X1 plus two. So, that, so these bands should be surrounding the entire line a little bit past the domain for which they are actually constructed on. And then let us create a uniformly distributed sequence across this interval lower B to upper B. And you can easily create a uniformly distributed data set and I'm gonna call it X star uh, via the sequence function. So it's sequence from the lower bound to the upper bound um, and the spacing, let's do 0 0.5. So let's assume that this lower bound is equal to one and this upper bound is equal to three. So if I do by 0 0.5, it's gonna do one, 1 1.5, two, 2.2, and three. So it's gonna give us those points um, as our domain for X star. And then our Y star is gonna be our point estimate um, for the response variable, which is typically taken to be the mean of the distributions. Because remember that our means should be linearly distributed um, as our model sort of assumes it to be. So our Y star is gonna be equal to beta one hat times our X star vector, and then plus our beta zero hat. So that gives us our Y star values. And now the only thing that we're missing here is our standard error, our margin of error for our confidence and prediction bands. And then we can go ahead and plot those values. So let's go ahead and construct our standard error terms. So the standard error for Y star for our confidence interval, this is gonna be equal to sigma, which is approximated by the square root of our mean square error for our error term, and then times the square root of one over N plus x star minus x bar, the quantity squared, all over the variance of x times n minus one. So that is the standard error for a confidence interval. And if you remember, the standard error for a prediction interval is practically the same exact thing, except it has a one plus next to the one over n term. That's the only difference uh, between the confidence and prediction standard errors. Okay, so now that we have our standard errors, now we can calculate our margin of errors for our confidence and prediction bands. So our margin of error for our confidence band, this is gonna be equal to our T critical value times our standard error for our Y star confidence interval. And our epsilon P is gonna be our margin of error for our prediction interval. Again, it's gonna be T crit. They should be the same exact alpha, so you should not be using uh, two different critical values here um, under different values of alpha. And this is gonna, of course, be S E Y star and P, all right? So now that we have our margin of error, now we can construct our main plot sequence uh, for which we're going to be displaying our line of best fit, our um, linear regression line, our confidence band, and our prediction bands for our simple linear regression model. So let's start off by plotting our uh, main uh, data. So that's gonna be X1, Y1. Let's create a main title here. So this is gonna be a scatter plot with CI and PI bands of our data. Okay, and let's also label our uh, the x axis and y axis. So, our x label, this is obviously going to be our predictor values. So, predictor values. And our y label is going to be our response values. Okay, so that's going to be our main plot. And next, I'm going to plot the line of best fit. So you can actually do this simply with a, b line. You don't have to use the LM function, actually. Um, so you can do a, so this is gonna be our vertical intercept. So this is gonna be equal to beta zero hat, and then our slope, which is gonna be b, this is gonna be equal to beta one hat, all right? Let's color it in a shade of red. I'm gonna use tomato just for fun. And then LWD, this is gonna be equal to two. So that's gonna draw your line of best fit onto our graph. And keep in mind for this, A is equal to intercept, B is equal to slope. So it's practically looking at it in the form Y is equal to A plus BX. Okay, so that's pretty much the structure. 
Um, so the next thing I want to do is graph my confidence and prediction bands because I have my data set here plotted in plot. I have my linear regression line plotted in red and AB line. Now I need my regression and my confidence and prediction lines. So I'm going to do lines x star uh, y star minus epsilon c. So that's our lower band for our confidence interval. Let's color it in. Let's do steel blue. And let's do a line width of 2. And then let's do the upper band. So lines x star and then y star plus epsilon c. Let's do the same exact color because they correspond to the same thing. So steel blue. And L2i equals 2. So that's our confidence band. And then lastly should be our prediction band. So it's going to be x star, same domain. So x star and then y star minus epsilon p. And what color do we want here? Let's do let's do green. Uh, let's same what? Same width. And then lines. And then x star we're gonna do y star plus epsilon p. Same color, same idea. Okay. And that should be it. So those are my. Uh, data points plotted in black, my AB line plotted in red, my, let's see, let's just catch that before it flags us, our confidence interval painted in blue, and our prediction interval painted in green. So let's see if we made any simple errors, and if we did, uh, let's go ahead and try to fix them. So let's go back to our primary function here. So what we're going to do, since we're not, um, we don't have the CIPI function in our environment, what we need to do is bring it in. So source uh, CIPI.R, that'll bring the function into our environment. And then we can call that particular function. So CIPI, let's do that as our X value, SY for a Y value and an alpha value. Let's do 5% just for fun. Oh no, it's got an error. Let's see if we can figure out where this error is located. Oh, that's not a hard error to find. Keep in mind that xx1 and y1 are the variables associated to our um, actual environment, not the function environment, right? So what did I call these vectors? x1 and y, okay? So there should not be any y1 there, right? So keep in mind, once you change codes, you have to import it again. And there it is. There is our uh, data set. Pretty cool, right? So our linear regression points are plotted in black circles. There's our linear regression line in red our confidence bands in blue, and our prediction intervals in green. Now keep in mind, if you plot x equals x bar onto this graph, that is where these confidence and prediction bands are closest to the linear regression line. And of course, if you don't know anything about how to apply and interpret or construct these formulas for the CI and PI bands of your data set, I have a video in our intermediate stats series in case you're interested in learning that. So that's one... Um, uh, application of uh, bivariate analysis. Now let us look and see how we can create a function that actually constructs an ANOVA table for a simple linear regression model. So for our ANOVA table, we're still going to be working with a bivariate data set. So SX1 and SY are still going to be used as our inputs. And we do not need an alpha value, let's assume, for our ANOVA table, because we're just going to be displaying the F test statistic, not necessarily concluding um, the hypothesis test, whether a linear regression model is appropriate for our data or not. We can leave that for the usage side. So we're just going to be using our um, SX1 and SY as our data inputs. So let's create a new function. And let's call this function ANOVA table. So it's going to be a function with inputs x, y, and 1. Let's just save this as the same exact name. So ANOVA table.r. And once we do that, then this file should appear in our uh, file directory, which indeed is. So let's calculate all the things that we need for our ANOVA table. So of course, we need the length of uh, x1. We need the means. Well, we might not need all the means, but let's just calculate them anyway. So mean of x1, y bar, this is going to be the mean of uh, y. Let's do the standard deviation, so sx, this is going to be the standard deviation of x1. Uh, sy, this is going to be the standard deviation of y. And let's do the correlation coefficient, rxy. This is going to be the correlation coefficient between x1 and y. Right. So those are our basic metrics. Now let us calculate our sum of squares and our mean squares for our error, 
total, and model, and then from that we can construct our F-test test statistic, and then create a data frame to display to our user. So the error sum of squares, remember this is going to be equal to SY the quantity squared times M minus 1, times 1 minus the correlation coefficient squared, or the coefficient of determination, as some people call it, and then MSE is going to be equal to the SSE, divided by the degrees of freedom for that error term, which in this case is going to be n minus 1 minus 1, or n minus 2, because we have one predictor. And then we have the sum of squares total, which is the same as the variance times m minus 1, the variance of y, or the variance of response terms, uh, times m minus 1. So that's going to be equal to sy squared times m minus 1. Okay, and then our mean square error, or our mean square total, this is going to be equal to SST divided by its associated degrees of freedom, which is going to be N minus 1. And what else do we have? So we have our model sum of squares, so SSM. So remember that this is equal to our total sum of squares minus our error sum of squares. So SST minus our SSE. And then we also have a mean square error for our model, so MSM. This is going to be equal to SSM divided by its degrees of freedom. Since we only have one predictor, we're just going to be dividing by one. And then for our F-test statistic, this is going to be equal to our MSM divided by our MSE. Now, if you don't know exactly how to calculate these by hand, for example, SSE, SSD, and SSM, and the relationships between them, in particular this uh, expression, SST is equal to SSE plus SSM, and why this is actually a F-test statistic, definitely check that out. Now that we have all of those calculations, now we can construct our ANOVA table. So we have some uh, titles to assign for each of these columns. So let's do ANOVA title. Uh, so we have our error type, our degrees of freedom, our sum of squared differences, our mean square uh, error for each of our sources. And then we have our F stat. Now, of course, we only have one F stat, therefore we have to insert some um, useless values into our table because remember, these vectors in a data frame need to be the same exact length. So we have to sort of include some NANDs uh, to make sure everything uh, flows well in its implementation. So then we have our ANOVA um, value for our model. So this is going to be equal to what? So this is going to be equal to, so the error type is going to be equal to, of course, the model. The degrees of freedom is going to be equal to 1 because we have one predictor. And then we have the SSM, then the MSM, and then the F stat associated to that. So keep in mind, same number of columns, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So then let's do our ANOVA value. So let's do our error term. So error type source. So this is going to be our error term. So the degrees of freedom for this is going to be n minus 1 minus 1, or m minus 2. Then we have our SSE, MSE, and then let's just put a little smiley face here just to uh, make sure they're the same exact length. And then our NOVA value for our total. So our total error. All right. So what is the degrees of freedom for that? So it's going to be equal to m minus 1. And then we have SST, and then we have our MST. And then let's put another smiley face so that they have the same exact number of columns. And now that we have our ANOVA table, we construct it. So ANOVA table. Um, let's call this ANOVA table. Yeah, that's fine. Let's make a data frame from these four vectors. Okay, so it's going to be ANOVA.title and then ANOVA.value.m and then ANOVA.value.e and then lastly, ANOVA.value.t. Okay, make sure all of those have the same number of columns, else it will not run. So that is our ANOVA table. And then we're not returning this ANOVA table, we're just going to be printing it to the user um, so that we don't have any um, wasted space in our local environment. So let's just print, and let's also do the transpose of that matrix, and then ANOVA table. And you'll see why I want that transpose in just a moment. So hopefully there are no errors in this code, and if so, we can quickly try to find them. So we need to source this new function into our environment. So this is going to be a nova, a nova table dot r, a nova table dot r. Okay, so our nova table is in our environment. So life is wonderful. And then let's do a nova. So let's call that function. So a nova table, and then input x one and y s y. 
Those are the names of our variables in our local environment. And once we input that, notice that it does give us exactly what we want. If you don't do the transpose, it's going to um, do the rows, the comms, and the comms, and the rows. Um, I can go into detail on that, but some, you know, that's just a quick debugging um, that I already knew was actually going to happen. So that is pretty much our ANOVA table. So that's our F-test statistic, our 118.54. Now, if you're not sure what to compare that to, you would compare that to a F critical value, a 1 comma N minus 2 critical value that is associated to a one-tailed test, associated to whatever alpha value you want. So that is just some basic um, bivariate simple linear regression analysis techniques, uh, in particular the ANOVA table with the F-test statistic and the confidence and prediction bands associated to that linear regression model. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Thank you.